Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, today we're going to diagnose a possible faulty hard drive on this Mac Mini and uh, if it's faulty we're going to replace it with an SSD. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of the Mac Mini to be honest. The very first generation of them was really cool because it was like £400 for all the optional extras and I bought one from new. Uh, but ever since then it's kind of just gotten more expensive and not very fast. And these days now, it's just horridly underpowered and too expensive for what it is, I think. However, with an SSD, it should be bearable. Now, if we take off the bottom cover, uh, we get faced with this. Um, and uh, as you can see, we have to do a little bit of digging now. The hard drive is buried underneath this section. So we've got to take all of these bits out so we can then take this cover off and it kind of sort of levers out from underneath. So let's start taking bits out. Uh, I'm just going to remove everything inside just to give myself a little bit more working space. The memory and stuff like that doesn't have to come out, but it just means that I'm less likely to clip it while trying to squeeze something out because there is a little bit of sort of levering and uh, tight fitting involved in this one. Uh, right, what are you? Are you a T6? No, uh, it feels like a T7. No, it is a T6. Right, so there's our cooling fan out. Next, we're going to remove this triangle bit here. That unscrews. And then uh, it kind of works its way out, I think. There we go, like that. So that uncovers the heat pipe for the cooling system. Now, next, I think we can now take this cover off. So, those look a bit bigger. Those are going to be T8s, I'd imagine. Yeah. Now, again, that's just going to move out from underneath that cover. Now, we've got to be a bit careful here. There's a wireless antenna holding this in. Now, I'm just going to pull that out. There we go. That unclips from just inside just in there, so watch out for that. Right, I think we'll have enough clearance to get the hard drive out now, so I'm just gonna lift that up from the side and just see if I can work that out. Ooh. There we go. If you're unlucky enough to have one of the dual drive models, it's kind of the same deal, but there's just two levels of drive and less space to work in. I believe they come out, come out in exactly the same way, it's just a bit trickier to remove. Right, I've just unplugged that from there, and now we've got our hard drive. So, let's pull that cable off. And I'm gonna remove one of them, and now I can drop it into my hard drive dock and get that on test and just confirm that this has definitely failed. Right, there's our drive. Let's just run a basic test on this. Short generic in C tools for Windows. Right, that just made a clonking noise. So that's a bad start. Okay, we passed the short generic, so we'll put it on long generic. And I'll see you guys once that progress bar has gotten through. I'll just let that get started first, just to make sure it doesn't fall over straight away. Nope, I'll see you guys in maybe two hours. Okay, right, uh, this has been running for about 20 minutes now and it hasn't even started the test and the hard drive doesn't appear to be doing anything at all. We're getting like the odd flash from the activity light and that's it. So this drive clearly has problems. Given enough time, this will almost undoubtedly come back with a timeout failure, but based on past experience, it should have begun the test by now. It should have done something in 20 minutes, especially given that this is not gonna be a huge hard drive, like 500 gigs tops. So we're gonna assume this is dead. I'm gonna go ahead and get an SSD in this thing. Okay, right, so here's our new SSD. This is a Samsung 750 Evo, which is my weapon of choice for general upgrades at the moment. 
Uh, as I've said in other videos, there are quicker drives out there than the uh, 8750. The 850 is a faster, more long-lasting drive. However, the 750 is crazy good value for money and still very good performance. So, highly recommended SSD all round. Uh, right, I need to figure out where these things go in again. That's going to go in there. That's going to go in that way around. So, the pegs need to go on this side. The great thing about recording your work is that when you drop a screw, you can just watch the recording back and see exactly where you dropped it. Right, so we're going to align this in. Now this is a bit of a balancing project because the problem is those screws go into pegs on the opposite side and I can't actually see them from here. So um, I've got to push the drive into position and then just kind of lift it up and down until I feel the pegs drop into place. Um, There we go. What I did just then, I put my prime tool down the side so I could lift the back of the drive up to keep it flat. And now we'll just reconnect that ribbon cable and that's now in place. Now this thing doesn't go in with any real certainty. That's, that's basically it, that movement there. So not a great fit, but once we've got all the covers back in place, that should stop that rattle. And because this is a solid state drive, there's nothing to be concerned about there anyway, because it's shot proof. So we're not worried about that motion. Um, okay, let's get this thing back together. So this cover goes back on first. We need to reconnect that antenna. So I'm gonna line that up and then just grab a pair of tweezers just to press that back onto the connector. This is a horrible place for an antenna connector. There we go. Oh, I see what's going to happen now. Um, so now, these longer screws, these go through this hole straight into the bottom of the SSD or the drive, so that's going to that's going to hold that in place and stop any movement. Right now that's screwed in. We'll drop our RAM back into place, which didn't really need to come out after all, but whatever, it doesn't cost anything. Now the cover over the heat sink heat pipes goes in. This needs to slot in this end first just to make sure that sits in place properly, I think. There we go. So those holes now line up with those two screws. I wish I'd plugged that in before I put the screws in. Let me just see if I can wrangle that underneath. There we go. Nice. That is done. Put that bottom cover back on and we're finished. Okay, so I've got my MacOS Sierra flash drive plugged in and we're just booting up from that now and we can go ahead and kick off an installation. Okay, right, use English for the main language.
okay, we need to disk utility our new SSD first to get a format on it because the MacOS installer does not format drives for you. So we're going to go select our drive, click Erase, and I'm going to call it Samsung OS X Extended GRD Partition Map Go. Done. And now we can install MacOS. Okay, we're up to first run, so we're going to go United Kingdom, and we're going to set up British, and we're going to connect to my Wi-Fi network, so we can get some updates. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select our Seagate backup drive, which is our Time Machine drive. Next. And there's our backup. And we're going to select all of this stuff. We're going to restore everything. So I'm just going to hit continue. Okay, right. Our data restore is finished and we're now restarting. And now we should find that it comes back up with the customer's original login. There may be a slight delay while it run, does first run again. Yeah, there's the first run. Okay. All right, and there we go. We're done and we're ready to go. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.